Every year I put off Christmas shopping and every year it bites me. But this year, I'm gonna bite back and show you how I designed an adorable homemade Christmas gift in time for the holiday season. Let's go to the drawing board. On this channel, I make two things, soap and wax melts. The former is fancier and lasts longer, but is time consuming and expensive to make. The latter, wax melts, are easy peasy, lemon squeezy. They're also relatively cheap to make, so you can follow along at home as well. I'm gonna go with a Candyland, sugary, gumdrop sort of theme for these wax melts because I feel like Christmas just doesn't have enough candy. I still want the Christmas theme to be apparent though, so to do that, I'm gonna red and green those bottom two layers. To turn these wax melts into gumdrop wax melts, I wanna figure out a way to make colored spots all over the wax melt, almost as if the wax had confetti in it. And I have a little trick up my sleeve for how I'm gonna accomplish that. I'm just preparing a little palette of red, yellow, and blue candle dye that I'm gonna try to splatter into the mold with a paintbrush to get that speckled confetti look. If you didn't see my last Pure Melt video where I tried inventing a new wax melt coloring technique that totally didn't work, I'll leave it in the upper right hand corner so you can catch up. In short, I'm gonna use that same technique here because I think this time it'll actually work for the look I'm going for. Except the paintbrush technique decided not to work? For some reason? It worked when I tried it on a sheet of paper and now when I want to show someone it's refusing to work. Also, don't get candle dye on your hands. I don't know if you could see it very well in the video, but my fingers looked like they had been shoulder deep in a Cheeto bag for like a week. <laughs> So I quickly gave up on the knuckle knocking and came up with the brilliant idea to just paint the dots on directly. I know. Genius. I discovered very quickly that this candle dye wasn't going to cut it because look at how atrocious the colors are. The blue was brown, the red was pink, and the yellow was sunshine daisies buttermellow. I tried attempting a green, but my blue and yellow were giving me purple. People, viewers, anyone watching this, the candle dyes from Michael's are poo. I'm sorry. To pivot, I mix some mica with isopropyl alcohol to make my own set of wax compatible paints that I can use to make those gumdrops. Now that the gumdrops are ready, it's time to melt our wax. I'm gonna use soy wax flakes that I got from Michael's. No, I haven't forgiven Michael for that abominable excuse for candle dye, but he gets a pass for this soy wax. Make Market is the only brand of soy wax I've tested thus far, and I just like the way it smells. It, it, it smells like white chocolate, but without the chocolate. Does that make sense? And it smells like white. Okay, it smells like sweet white. I melted it down and it's sitting at 85 degrees Celsius, which is a little warm to add the fragrance. While I wait for it to cool down to about 70 degrees or so, I'm wrapping it in a paper towel because wax strips are the bane of my existence and they get on the table and your fingers and they contaminate all the other wax melts, so yeah. I also decided to throw in some super sparkle mica because it brings me joy. I thought about leaving the white layer just blank, but what are gumdrops without a little sparkle? The fragrance I'm using for the wax melts is called Snowberries, and it smells like sweet and fruity, but mature. Oh my god, I just described myself. No, I, I'm, I'm kidding. Sweet and fruity, yes. Uh, mature, anything but. <laughs> Before I pour the wax, I heated the mold in the microwave for a minute just to get it up to 50 degrees. Now, this is to ensure that the wax stays as flat as possible so I can get nice, even layers. I find if the walls of the mold are too cool, then the wax condenses weirdly and you get this unusual rippling along the side of the wax melt, so I'm going to do whatever I can to avoid that. Now it's time for that white layer to sleep and solidify. On to the next layer. I'm using a mix of jungle green and neon bright green micas, which is the exact color combination I used in my peppermint soap to get that really nice subdued green color. Jungle green on its own is a few shades too dark, so I use the neon to pump it up. But with wax, you can never truly be sure how the colors will turn out unless you let the wax solidify and become opaque. Wax really washes out color, so if you're aiming for something vibrant, you're gonna need a lot. To keep my mold warm, I can't really pop it into the microwave anymore because the first layer will melt. So I'm just blasting it quickly with a blow dryer to get it up to temperature, and now that green is ready to go. I don't know how this keeps on happening. I'm using a scale, people, but somehow I ran out of wax. This happened with my other wax melts too, but I'm just using a skewer to salvage the literal dinner scraps of the wax and try to get it to form some semblance of a layer. 
but the green is tired and so am I, so it's time for it to sleep and solidify. Last layer, let's go. Now, despite being designed to be the same size as the green layer and proportionally smaller than the white layer, the red layer actually uses the same amount of wax as the white layer. I won't try to explain the math of pyramid volumes here because it's a federal crime for me to try to explain anything mathematical because I'm so bad at it. I'm gonna plagiarize my peppermint soap video further by copying the exact same color combo I use for my red because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm testing the red beside the green. I wanted to ensure they were a similar tonal value and that one wasn't brighter or darker than the other. If I make this picture black and white, you can see that there's a difference. To fix that, I just added a tad more of that pinky red to lighten it up and make it a bit happier. Now, pouring the red was a lot more appealing to the eyeballs. You can really see the depth of that mica and how it just swirls around and leaves those patterns and it just looks so velvety and Christmassy and edible. That red needs its beauty rest, so for the final time, my wax melts are being tucked away to sleep and solidify. It's been 24 hours and the pyramid melts are ready to come out. In case you're wondering, that white dandruff that they have is called wax frosting, and it's very common in vegetable waxes like soy wax. Now, I don't care about wax frosting for two reasons. One, it adds some character to the pyramid melts, or so I tell myself so I don't have to source another type of wax. Two, wax frosting sounds delicious and I want it in my mouth. While unmolding these, I have to be gentle with the tips because they break off really easily. And that's a problem because instead of having pyramids, I'd have truncated pyramids and that's unacceptable. With this first one, I ended up breaking off the tip anyways, precisely because I wanted to show what a truncated pyramid looks like. Now, pretty much everything about these wax melts went according to plan, except for some reason, the red and yellow candle dyes became nebulous and blended with the wax. Oh, you know, that thing I wanted them to do with my other wax melts, but that they refused to do because the only thing these candle dyes are good for is causing me distress. But I digress. Let's look at the product shots. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice about these wax melts is how inconsistent the different layers are. And I have no idea how this is happening because I'm using a scale. Now, even though the yellow and red dye dissolved to become the most atrocious color of concentrated yellow snow, those green and blue quote unquote gumdrops turn out swimmingly. And I love how attention seeking those gorgeous red and green layers are. Most of all, I finally have the perfect stocking stuffers to give my friends this holiday season. But before I do, I gotta heat one up. While these wax melts become the most unholy shade of brown when melted, they fill the room with the delightful aroma of those sugared sweets that we all know and love and literally only see on the top of gingerbread houses. Now I named this group of pure melts Gumdrop Castle, but my printer disagreed with me and took the name in a wildly different direction. Let me just fix that. That was a pure melt journey with the soap universe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.